Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and welcome to the 16th video in the beginner's guide to Unity 6. This time we'll cover creating collectibles. Remember to subscribe and click the notification bell to stay up to date with every tutorial I upload. Feel free to leave a comment and drop a like. I also have a Patreon page where you can help be a part of this channel and you'll find all the scripts and the assets to this series there too, along with plenty of other things. You can also now join as a free member. Now on with the tutorial. So because this segment is going to be all about actually playing the game, what I want to do is turn off the ability to actually run our coroutine that we had earlier. And all I'm going to do is just turn off the starter script. And that'll give us the ability to wander around and do what we need to. So in doing so, we need to turn on our player and we need to add the camera back onto the camera route. Next thing I want to do is I want to import another sound effect, like, much like we did last time, but this one is specifically for a collectible gem. So I'm going to drag and drop this collect sound into my effects folder. And then I'm going to go to my objects and I'm going to import this gem. And you can get these in the pinned comment or the description. Click the link and you can download them for free. Just remember to unzip before you try importing into Unity. Now what we'll do is we will create an object that can house the gem itself. So if we go to game object, let's go to 3D object and we'll stick with cube because cube is the most versatile and fundamental object of game development. Let's select uh, the middle of the scene for it. So zero, zero, zero on the transform. Let's bring it out the ground and let's bring it over here. Let's rename this to gem and let's go into the gem folder in objects go into prefabs and you can see you have a couple of different gem options they all are pink at the moment but we can easily change that so we'll do a couple of things that we've learned previously and you'll see how all of these things can come together to create a different desired effect so drag and drop this gem onto the gem object which is the cube itself and if we double click, we can see it is fairly small, so we do need to increase its size. So let's change this to 50 by 50 by 50. Let's move it downwards so as it kind of mingles into the cube a bit. Might be a bit too big, actually. Let's have it as 40 by 40. That looks great. Uh, so if we go a little bit further and go onto the mesh of this particular thing, you'll notice Mesh Collider. We want to remove the mesh collider because we don't really need it. It's not important to what we're trying to do here. The gem itself, which is the cube, let's untick mesh renderer. And then let's press play and see how this actually looks in our game. It should just be a pink gem shaped blob. And it is. So it looks like it's intersecting the floor a little bit. So let's bring it upwards and make sure it's out the ground. And now let's actually make it look useful let's make it look like a decent color so remember when we created materials well why don't we just create a new material uh, by right clicking and we can click material here and we'll just call it red because i'm going to have this as red set the color to red and then drag and drop onto there you can change the metallicness if, if, if you wanted to make it look cool i guess it's entirely up to you what you want it to look like but um, for all intents and purposes, there's our collectible gem. Next thing we need to do is we need to write a script which will allow us to physically collect that gem. And this requires a couple of different things with a couple of different triggers and uh, physics again to actually get this working. Uh, what we will do is the ding sound that we have here. I'm actually going to replace the audio with the collect sound. So over here, Let's replace ding, let's select the button, and let's have collect. Close that, let's change the pitch back to one, and let's write that script that will allow us to collect it. So let's go to scripts, right click, create a new script, and we'll call this gem collect. And let's open that up in Visual Studio. Now, fundamentally, there's only one thing that we really need to have on here. And that is basically the ability to play a sound effect whenever we collect this gem. So that means that the first thing we need to do is serialize field, 
as we already know, and have audio source, and we'll call it ding, same as before. So that means that instead of having a start method or an update method, we need an on trigger enter method. That means that whenever something enters this area, which would be the player, we get to play the ding sound. So delete all of that. So we only have this variable declaration inside the class. And then we can say um, void on trigger enter open close bracket and open curly bracket. And if the word private does appear by automa uh, automatically, you can just delete it. It doesn't need to be private, that's fine. Next thing we need to say is ding dot play, because we want to be able to play that collectible. Next thing we need to say, at least for now, that this game object needs to be destroyed. The reason we want to destroy it is because we don't want the ding sound to be played over and over and over. You could also set it as inactive, but I guess it doesn't really matter. For now, we're just going to put destroy and in brackets game object, and that's a lowercase g. Remember earlier when I spoke about uppercase and lowercase uh, on game object being two different things? Well, this is a prime example. So now let's save this script and let's head back into Unity. We need to essentially get this script onto the gem, attach the ding sound to the variable, and then set up a trigger. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a couple of different things so we can experiment and see what theoretically happens if we have different settings set up and try to collect the gem. So let's drag and drop gem collect onto our gem. Let's tick is trigger down here. And then further down, we just need to add the ding sound right here. So we can drag and drop ding to there. Let's now press play. And we'll head over to the uh, object itself. And collect it. So there's our collectible. Now I said I was going to do a couple of different things to illustrate things here. And what I want to really make a point of saying is we did this on trigger enter. And this is important because if we had not set our gem as a trigger, this would not work. All that would happen is that we would walk into the gem and would not be able to pass through the gem. We'd kind of get stuck. So we'd stop like so. That's why this needs to be set as a trigger. And at this point, because it's a collectible, you can say, I don't know, let's duplicate this, put one there, duplicate this, put one here, duplicate it, put it there, uh, duplicate it, put it here, duplicate it, put it over here. And if you press play now, although it's the same script attached to every object, every single object that is a collectible will now be its own individual entity. Like so. And each one is destroyed. However, when we stop playing, they are reappearing. So that's fine. And I guess it doesn't have to be, you know, the way it is. Uh, for example, if we select all of these gems, and we shrink the size to 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. Uh, so they're much smaller. Let's have the ding set as um, a higher pitch. So 1.2 or 1.3. Uh, let's take uh, this gem, hold control, press D, bring it over here. And it's the exact same script, but it's going to be different. So if we go to our materials and we hold control, press D on red, let's have this as green and just change the color to green and let's attach that to uh, gem 6 which is that one uh, helps if I actually put it on the right one doesn't it uh, on the mesh there we go so now this is green let's increase the size of this to five five uh, sorry one 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 so this is a bigger gem so this is a bigger collectible uh, and what we can do is we can take ding and we can hold control press D to duplicate it and this will be a deeper ding so 0.9 so we just need to make sure that gem 6 relates to that deeper ding sound like so and press play and now we can go and collect these red well oh, thanks Alexa uh, so we can go over here 
collect these. And we collected the green one as well, along the way for some reason. Uh, let me put the green one right at the end over here. Press play. And let's take one final look at our collectibles. So, collect them all. There we go. Oh, and there's that rolling down the hill. It nearly got over the, the bump then. I wonder what would happen if we actually brought the bridge up one more level. Sorry guys, I, I really wanted to have a quick look. Curiosity has got the better of me. Uh, round about there. Let's press play, I just want to have a look at that. I'm going to collect these collectibles again because I like the sound of it. Hey, there we go. Ding. What happens with this then? Go on, keep rolling, keep rolling, rolling, rolling. Cool. He's still rolling. Is he going to hit something? Going to hit the fence? Hey. Anyway, uh, what we'll do next time is something called ray casting. And I'll explain a bit more about ray casting, but it's a feature that you would use in Unity, which is very, very useful, uh, depending on what type of game you try to make. So anything with combat and things like that, Raycast is important. So remember to subscribe, click the notification bell, stay up to date with every tutorial, and I will see you next time.